Hey y'all! Hey, 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 happy Saturday, happy, happy Saturday. Y'all, I went to go take my notes for Ready to Love, and it's not on, on demand. I don't know what's going on with it, but it's not on, on demand. So, I gotta wait for it to come up there so I can give y'all a review. <laughs> Because your girl memory is shot and I don't remember nothing. I, I just don't remember nothing. But we got some tea to get into because child of reunion ended. And like as soon as the reunion ended, it was it was like uh, all heck broke loose. Like seriously, everybody just started going. It was like everybody, you know, like just started coming out of woodworks. This is why, and I'm going to say this. This is why we need a break between the seasons. Okay. I know Ready to Love want to throw out these episodes and these seasons like water. I know they want to. They want to get the views. They want to get the money. They want to get all of that. But they got to give us a break and they got to give these castmates, since they ain't got good D um, N NDAs, to go out and just, you know, give their side of story. Child, we still getting interviews. And the next season start Friday. <laughs> so they need to give us a break so that we can, you know, unfold and unpack everything that happened in the season. We don't, we need a break. Okay. Married at first sight, at least give us four weeks, three to four weeks in between. I feel like Ready to Love should do the same thing. Like, I'm not mad at you for wanting to get the seasons out, but you got to give us time to unpack all the foolishness. Okay. Because child, I don't know where to start. Do y'all want to start with shallow allegations or do y'all want to start with um, old girl's allegation about Cornelius? Because we got to get into both of them. I think the situation with Cornelius is a little longer. So I think maybe we should start with um, shallow. Yeah, let's start with shallow. Where is put a ring on it? I don't know. But y'all, I'm going to give y'all a second. I'm going to put this... Um, Intro on. I'm going to put my cat up because she doing something. And we're going to get right into it, okay? Okay. go what i need y'all to do is like this video like this video so we can get more people up in the room okay so let's start with shallow so um what what i'm hearing is shallow is allegedly suing own network or suing ready to love whichever one comes first i guess i'm not really sure um i, I don't have the specifics and this is all alleged okay um, she said uh, supposedly that she has bruises from it and that someone or um, ready to love is trying to protect Phil. Now, I sat back and I thought to myself, y'all, I don't know how I feel about this. OK, um, when Shallow said that she did not feel like she was trying to harm her, I feel like she put that statement out and that's going to hold a lot of weight because Tommy asked her specifically more than once. Um, even Phil asked her specifically more than once, did she feel as though he was trying to harm her? And she continued to say only emotionally, only emotionally. So how did we get to a lawsuit with your bruises? Now, remember when we were watching the clip of the, the conversation between Phil and Shallow? Shallow said that you don't have the bruises to show for it. You don't know how it feels to be trapped and not be able to go where you want to go. And you don't have the bruises to show for it. So we all assume that she was talking about bruises from the past, right? So I don't know if this is from the incident or she was just referring to something previously. But what I will tell you is that if she's 
if she feels as though she has a strong enough case to go up against own or ready to love or whoever, she might have a case. That's what I think. But I feel like she needs to be very, 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 very sure in what it is that she is trying to get across because this is a man's reputation on the line, okay? She is literally now putting his reputation on the line. And I feel like this is why in Sydney's interview on Crystal's channel, Crystal XOXO, she decided that she, Sydney was like, I don't really want to talk about it too much. I don't really want to talk about it too much. Exactly, A.W. So that's why you don't go picking up folks when they tell you not to touch them because you get put in hot water and you're all of a sudden trying to figure out what happened. Why are we here? Unfortunately, it's sad because his intentions were well. His intentions were fine. So it just sucks that because this got blown out of proportion or someone was in their feelings. We are here. It's crazy, right? And that's how I feel, Brown Sugar. Hey, boo, you know, it's always the membership logo for me. Always. <laughs> this is why... Um, this is why I, I feel as though they replayed that clip or they replayed Tom, Tommy... Um, asked to her more than one time to, did you feel as though he was going to harm you? And I, I really feel like that's why they did it because they did not want this to happen. So when everyone was asking why she wasn't at the, why she wasn't at the reunion, supposedly production told her not to come. I mean, why would they insist you suing us? <laughs> You're suing us. We don't want you here. And I guess that's why Zadia came. Okay. Now, what I got to say about the incident with Zadia, I feel as though this is why they downplayed everything that was happening with Zadia and Dante because they didn't want more um, highlights on domestic abuse or violence of some sort. This is why I feel as though they downplayed it and made it seem as if it wasn't a big deal. Because remember, we all was like, oh, no. Oh, no. They need to say what they got to say. Zadia literally got up there and kind of laughed it off. Dante looked bothered. Okay. It looked like he wanted to say what he wanted to say, but he couldn't because he probably was already coached through this and said, we're not going to go deep into this. Okay. Even Phil, when they cut to Phil, looked like he was very uncomfortable with the whole situation. So this made makes me believe as though they are trying to do damage control by not highlighting what happened because they don't want this to seem like something that happens all the time. Right. And I, that's another thing. If you felt as though he was trying to hurt you or harm you, why didn't you say that? And we all say if Shiloh would have said that, we would have stood beside her because that is her feelings. That is how she feels. And we can't take that away from her, whether we agree with it or not. We can't take away how she feels. Right. So when you say that you didn't feel harm. OK, so then what is all of this really about? It comes down to the fact that your feelings were hurt. You felt like you wasn't chosen. And that's it. I really, 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 really hope that she is not doing this out of being angry and bitter or because she's coming off as if, um, you know, because she's being portrayed a different way in you, um, the YouTube streets, the Twitter streets, the Facebook groups were dragging her. And I think at this point it becomes a pride thing. And I'm just, you know, just speaking my opinion. This is not any facts. I think it may have something to do with her pride being a little hurt and so, you know, um, make it valid on what she has to prove she's taking it to the extent of suing, allegedly. It That sucks. That sucks because as much as I, I want to, I, I, okay, right, okay. He shouldn't have picked her up, but he felt like he was doing the right thing. And unfortunately, you can't feel like you're doing the right thing with someone because then you'll get put in this situation. Um, this is why these days, this is why production tell them do not go on dates, do not do anything without us because of these incidents right here.
Dante definitely has more of a case than Shallow. Other castmates were there, and this is why I feel as though they're not speaking on it a lot. If you look at a lot of the interviews, people are saying certain things. The only one who kind of got into it a little bit was Frank, and Frank basically said that she just was, you know, overly emotional, kind of in her feelings, and just took it way overboard, okay? That's how Frank um, explained it, that they were waiting for her to come to the car for a, a while, a couple of hours, and it was raining outside, and she didn't go. So the heat, um, so that's why Phil, after asking to her multiple times and telling her like look come on let's go let's go let's go he got fed up and said i'm not about to be out here to to, to 12 o'clock in the afternoon it's already five o'clock so we gotta go we gotta go so he decided that he was just gonna pick her up and take her away unfortunately that's got him in a hot seat but it didn't say that i don't i don't know if he she's pressing charges against him but I do, um, but it is being a legend that she is suing the com um, own or ready to love. Now, this is the thing. If you were uh, that upset with Phil, why are you going to press charges against him if he was a problem? So um, what's being a legend is that she feels as though he is, um, they were protecting Phil. And this is why she is going after the network, because they were trying to protect him. Y'all, I don't know how true any of this is, so don't go out there saying Chloe said, okay? <laughs> but um, I did hear it um, in one of the interviews, or I think it was the panel on Little Black Book. It was thrown out there, and Kamisha Reviews did a video on some of it as well, and this is where I got a little bit of my little facts from, and I figured I'll just come bring it to you guys, speak a little bit on it, and we're going to move on because I don't want, you know, I don't want that drama over here, child. We're going to keep it real cool and cute. <laughs> Okay, um, but unfortunately, this is the situation we in. And I hope that seasons to come um, realize that when they say don't go out on no dates without us, don't do it. I don't care if that girl walking down the alley by herself, let her go. Let her go. Let her go. That's all it comes down to. I feel like if ready to love and put a ring, well, own in general, don't tighten up. They're not going to have a network because ready to love is already on thin ice with this. And we can't get another season to put a ring on it for God knows when, how, when they're going to bring that back at the, the, um, you know, the charade that happened last season. So I feel like uh, put a ring on it is really taking their time and they doing some research and they actually going to try to get it right because they don't want this to continue happening. And then people lose, you know, faith in the show or the network in general, but it's just getting to the point where it's like, whew. It's a lot. It's a lot for our show. <laughs> it's, it's a whole lot for our show on the own network. <laughs> it's a lot. We need to do better. They need to, you know, give them. Um, and I think, and this is my opinion. If they stop letting these people do the interviews, you see how Married at First Sight don't really let them do no interviews. They can't even go and be on any television shows for a year. All the Married at First Sight contestants cannot be on any shows or for a whole year after their season is aired, okay? So this is why I feel like um, I don't need to take a note for that. That will eliminate a lot of the clout chasing. That will eliminate a lot of the, you know, foolery behind the scenes because then we'll be able to get more genuine connections and people who are not trying to drive for fame. Um, Because all they want to do is go up there and get their interviews, promote their business, and, you know, so on and so forth. Not all of them, but let's get into Cornelius and Camille. Okay. Last night, shout out to two Ellie's girl, girl. I was sitting at home minding my business about to go get in the shower. I'm like ready to love just went off. I drink my little wine. I was feeling, you know, a little groovy. And I'm like getting um, a DM, like get in here now. And I was like, okay, click on it. Ciao. There's a girl on the internet, okay, um, she's Courtney's friend, and she said that her and Cornelius were dating, okay, at, um, doing, um, while we were watching the show, not necessarily doing filming, and I'm going to start playing um, some of the live for you, and we're going to discuss it as we get into it, because it's a lot to it, and then I have some messages from Camille, on what she had to say after the whole situation to debunk what this girl is saying. And I'm going to let y'all choose and pick who y'all agree with or who y'all believe. Okay. 
All right, so let's start. I just can't. Hold on. So wait, wait, wait. He said that the, the ages and stages interview like last week. Mm -hmm. Oh, I watched that. Wait, he said he did the ages and stages interview last week, and he sat there and was like, "I'm I've been exclusive since." Wait, what? Because I saw a blogger. I'm oh like, is that Samo? I'm sorry, my hand is raised. Hey, boo. Oh. I, I'm not talking about your show. I'm not. I'm not talking about your show. I'm not. I'm not saying. That. Oh no 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 ma'am no ma'am sorry I didn't I didn't mean to interrupt. It's okay because Courtney you ain't gonna say nothing. I was like oh my god did you? So first I'm gonna point out the fact that she looked real starstruck when she saw Simone. And she also looked a little nervous, okay? So when we get into Camille's, um, you know, messages or whatever, keep that in mind, okay? Put her, like, I'm not talking shit. Like, I'm not being shit. Oh, no, no, I don't, I don't feel that way. I'm listening. Continue. Oh, okay. So, I mean, from, from when, when I met Cornelius, like, because I do media, entertainment, and things like that, I met him at an event. And I remember, like, just being like, oh, he, you know, he's on the show and stuff like that. I never even knew, like, he had any ties or nothing connections with Camille. Like, I didn't even know that was connected. Man, he just happened to be on a show. And um, so we started talking and started, you know, talking about business things. And, like, you know, I was like, yeah, I, ha I have a lot of people I'm connected to. I can try to get you on some red carpets. I can, like, introduce you to some people, you know, things like that. And I was like, oh, but if you're, if you're in any type of situation, I don't want to step on nobody's toes. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Okay, so this is the first thing. If she was approaching Cornelius saying that she was going to try to get him into some events, trying to get him into some, you know, situations or whatever so he can be seen or whatever the case may be, what does that have to do with him being in a situation? Okay, that's my first thing. She said she was in a situation. If you're in a situation, I don't want to step on nobody's toes. But if you're out here trying to, you know, be a publicist or, 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 you know, get him some clout or whatever, how do the two intertwine? Were you trying to get with him or were you trying to help him? Yes, Erica is definitely giving Elena energy, okay? I don't know why these men have not learned that if you want to do what you want to do and you want to portray a real relationship, then you need to just, like, slow your hormones down and step away from the bs okay because this is how you end up in these situations and you look and you get dragged for it because you don't know how to keep your peen in your pants like come on you this is like you know like boy you know this gonna get out you know this gonna get out but let's go like for nothing and he was like nah you're fine so we just started doing so hey so he was he was insinuating that he was single yes he said he was single or he insinuated it from from my being and understanding, like this, he's single. Like the, he told me, the show is fake. Like the show is not real. Like it's all production. It's all they put this stuff together. Yeah. So in my mind, I'm just like, okay. Anyway, moving on, you know, and continued on. So you know, we talked every day. We text. Um, this is that's what I was asking. When was the reunion? Because we would be on the phone to like six o'clock in the morning, and yeah, like. Okay, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, rewind. So you went to New York. Yes. With, you went to New York with Cornelius. You, you didn't know he was in a relationship because he he told you he was single doing his thing. The show, yeah, and that the show is not real. Like After the reunion. What happened? You went to New York two weeks after the reunion? I don't know. Like, I don't know when, nothing. Like, I don't I don't know anything about it. November. When, when did you go to New York? Sorry, November, that was my question. November 19th. Of, of this like this year that was two weeks after the reunion yep. that was that was a, a month the before just... thanksgiving the week before thanksgiving interesting yeah okay sorry i have raised my hand First, I want to say before we keep going with y'all, because y'all know I got to add my little commentary in. Simone came on to Courtney's live and took over the whole thing. <laughs> Simone said, I got I got some questions. Shoot. OK, I need to get up in here on this. And I'm not mad at her because I feel like Courtney would have not let her spill the tea the way the tea was supposed to be spilled. OK, because that's what I wanted to clarify, because I had recently done an interview with him. Right. And for me, when I one of the uh, me and Cornelius go to okay. the same church, and so we're, is that how y'all met? No, we we met. Remember, I met, we met at the event, but we also do go. That's to the right. Church. 
So we were at church and after church, like I was about to leave. I was like, okay, I'm out. Sometimes, you know, we would go out, out to eat after church. And so this time he was like, Alex, wait. He was like, I need you to meet. I want you to meet somebody. And I was like, oh, okay, who? And he was like, and so I turned around and it was her. So I still didn't recognize who she was. And so he was like, you remember this is Tanika? I was like, Tanika? I was like, oh, the girl that you like, that your ex-girlfriend on the show? I was like, oh, okay. okay. So at, at that point, that episode had already aired. Uh, yes, I'm assuming. Yeah. So I was like, okay. Oh, okay. And so, because uh, I think he was telling me kind of like, yeah, everybody thinks that that wasn't my real girlfriend, but you know, she really was. So we sat down, we started talking. I thought that, that wasn't her real, his like real that. girlfriend. And so she was like, girl, you know, this is just crazy. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And so she was like, you know, we've really been praying on this. Like we've been praying that Cornelius will really be able to get this girl away from him. Like once the show is over. And I guess right now, like with the show still being on, like it's, you know, it's just gotten crazier, and we're just kind of concerned about what she may try to do to him. It okay, so hand raise. I'm, I'm, I'm Simone right now. Hand raise. Okay. Um. So they met with the ex girlfriend at the church. He met the ex girlfriend at the church. The ex girlfriend that no one believed was his ex girlfriend. No, that was Walter. We believe that Walter. That was not his ex girlfriend. Come to find out, it was true. Okay. So after that. Um, ex-girlfriend said they've been praying they have been praying to get <laughs> to get him away from Camille <laughs> child it's the praying to get him away for, from Camille for me because we all been saying it for the longest like child blink twice if you need help okay um, which is also part of the reason why I believe that um, Cornelius never wanted to be in a relationship with Camille. He wanted to do this for clout and he was willing to deal with whatever, whatever it took to get to the end so that he can look like a good guy. Okay. This is why they probably were sitting on that couch and she looked real irritated, and aggravated because Dante and Aisha had real love going on. Okay, they had real genuine love going on, and I feel a little bit bad for Camille because Camille, I honestly, honestly think that she thought Cornelius was 110% into her because he was playing the game as well. Mm. Okay, mm. Mm. So he wanted to get away, but it was too late. He was too invested. He had too much going on. He had to stay there. Okay. If he were to try to like cut her off, or, like, you know, try to publicly say he's single, you know, whatever the case is. And I was like, so are they together? Like, am I crazy to like be talking to this man or getting to know him? And she's like, no, not at all. You're not crazy. So we left. We went to get food. We went to focus right here in DC. We Around when was this? Was this like October? This was after New York. So after. Yeah. So this was November, almost going into yeah. December. Yeah. So we were sitting there, we were talking, and then I just kind of just asked her like how she felt about Hold on. Give me some time. Like, can you just wait for me? Like, can you just wait till the show is over? And I'm like, well, what's the wait? Like, I'm like, are you with her? Like, are y'all together? And so he was just like, you know, I'm just trying to still figure things out. Like, I just can't you know, like just cut her off. Like I have to let her think that it's any organically because if I just dump her or if I just say, I don't want to be with her no more and it's because of you and then I end up with you. Like he was just like, I just want to, I just want to move right. And so a lot of like, when I was listening to your interview. So he just want to move right. He wanted to make Camille, 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 child, Cornelius, Camille so much. He wanted to make Camille think that this was genuine. It was ending, you know, on their own. They were drifting apart. It was over. And then he was going to go be with this girl right here. Okay. I think her name's Alexis. I don't know. Don't quote me on that, child. I wasn't here to get those type of details. Um, so Cornelius. <laughs> Ciao. Y'all better be careful with these church boys who be out here selling you God. Be careful with them church boys who be out here selling you God. Okay? Okay. With him and that whole moving right. You want, oh, you listen? Okay. Yeah, listen. Like, I just want to move right. I don't want to do anything wrong. It was like a lot of these things, like, he was trying to say to me. Like, I just want to move the right way. And my whole thing was like, this man definitely attempted or was ready to attempt to have sex. Um, you know, I didn't let that go down because it was just like, 
I don't, I didn't know where he was and I didn't, I didn't know what was going on. And she had called him a few times while we were in New York and he had answered it. And I think like her grandfather or her uncle had died or something. Mm -hmm. So he's like, she wants to talk to me because her, her grandfather or her uncle passed away. So was he like, so he was like downplaying whatever they have going on. Yeah. So at this point, he's trying to get in them draws. At this point, he's trying to get in them draws, Mr. I'm saving myself. I'm saving myself. I'm saving myself. For sure. Yeah. So did he ever say, I have a girlfriend, Camille. So let me fast forward because some of this stuff I don't want to really care about. Trying to end it several times. But they didn't know how to do it with. What was about Courtney? That had nothing to do with no sisterhood. Oh, this is the part I want y'all to hear. The uh, energy, you know, the physical touch. I feel like I was reciprocating it. Or if I initiated, it was reciprocated. So I had said. So Courtney basically was, you know, giving Cornelius back that same energy when we were sitting here, like, why she always touching him? Why she always doing this? Because he was giving her that same energy and she was going with it. Meaning Cornelius had everyone thinking that he was this, you know, uh, feeling so uncomfortable. Ah, uh, she doing too much. When in all actuality, she wasn't because he was here for all of it. All of it. Okay. I on the black book and I had showed him a picture. I was like, look, like we took a picture together. Everything's all good. Like I wished him the best. You know, I didn't have no, no at towards him or anything but I think he was probably upset because he didn't want me to say that he was doing more than what he was off camera but it's it like it was like a bad thing it's okay to say you like somebody but I feel like he was doing that based off of well okay so to, to, so to sum it up pretty much yeah. whatever happened with whatever you happened between y'all off cameras that I guess you showed or revealed like he was having it up and like was just so upset and he was like I'm calling Camille and I was like what you calling her for like what's she gonna do he was like she's the only person who understands me right now because she's on the show and I was just like okay oh. but why do you sound just like him <laughs> so he was like I'm about to I'm about to call Camille and I'll call you back so he calls Camille apparently calls me back and then he was like um see I talked to Camille. Camille knew exactly who she was. This is exactly why they don't like her. I feel so bad for making her apologize for the brown girl squad thing. Okay. Stop, 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 stop. Y'all see Courtney's face? You see, you see Simone's face? That's my face. Say what now? Say, say what now? So basically... The whole thing with the Bound Girls Club was for, from the beginning was to start with Courtney. This is why she, he felt bad for telling her to take down that post. Take that post down. I feel bad for telling her that because now I see who Courtney really is. So Brown Girl Squad was created because of Courtney. Is that what I heard? Y'all tell me if that's what I heard because that's, a, that's what I think I heard. And y'all know we not going to do one thing over here. We going to break down some stuff because we talk about this stuff all season. So when people got stuff that they want to tell, I'm going to add it all up. We're going to make it all make sense if we don't do nothing else over here. So it sounds like she definitely, that they made up Brown Girls Club because it all started with C C Courtney because Courtney was going after Camille. And he, oh, I, I should have known who she was. I should have known who she was. Now I feel bad for making her take that post down. Girl, who child, when you really break this stuff down, it's a whole lot to it. That's why I was like, we got to go through some of this because I know it's a lot when you're watching the live and you don't want to really watch the whole live. You just want to get the key points. So I got you. Don't worry, but like the video. Okay, like the video, like the video. <laughs> this is why they really don't like them. This is why it started for Courtney. Brown Girls Club squad or whatever, okay, because they too old for that, club and squads, started because of Courtney. I said, wait, what? He was like, I made Camille take down that Instagram page. 
and I made her, I wanted her to call Courtney to apologize for the Brown Girl Squad thing. And I was like, oh, so it was about Courtney. That ain't had nothing to do with no sisterhood, bonding, nope. love, and this, that, nope. and third. It was all about Courtney. Mm-hmm. And I guess because she's like them. Mm. Okay. So the, the lawyer in me and the ADD in me I'm just wants to just summarize, make sure I'm following. Go. Which is that you guys were you guys were dating, if I understand correctly. He was telling you he was single. Yeah, for sure. And that uh, anything he had going on with Camille was production based only, not real life. It was not true, and he was trying to figure out a way to get out of it. Mm-hmm. Right, he, he had say trying to, and that he's trying to end it several times. Mm. He's trying to end it several times. He's yeah, trying to end it several his times. Girlfriend that came on the show reaffirmed that they, you know, she he had been trying to end it several times, but they didn't know how to do it without her effectively trying to uh, retaliate in some way or drag his name through the mud, okay? But that once, was he saying that like once the show was over that you guys could date yeah. more openly? He said if I could just wait for him. You- this is another reason why people do not believe that Ready to Love and shows like Put a Ring on it is real. They don't believe that it's real because you get people who come up here for opportunity and they get... um for opportunity and spoil it for everyone else, okay? You have people who were really looking for love, okay? Let's go back to Simone's season since she on the screen. Simone and Rashid had a thing, right? And then, um, what's her name? Was it, what's not Kyra? What's that girl name that was dating, that was messing with Rashid? Child, what's that girl name? Mm-hmm. It's slipping me. Hold on. Ariana, um, Adriana. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Adriana um, played the game. She played the game. She played the game. She could have, Rashi very much, I think, was looking for love. And he probably could have got it and with Simone because him and Simone had a real connection. And we didn't have people up there just for fame and spotlight. Because they could have been a real couple at the time of the show. Simone and Rashi, because remember they had went on a little date in the back of the truck and they had the wine and they had shared a kiss and everything. Remember all of that? They could have really, really, really been a real couple success at the reunion. But because we had people up there playing games with people, we can't get real connections. So when you got someone like Camille and someone like, um, I'm not really going to say too much Camille, but I'm going to say Camille. But you got someone like Cornelius who's sitting there on the sideline, you know, playing a game. You taking away real connections. He told her that this was fake so that he could get in her drawers or whatever the case may be. Don't believe that. That's just fake. That's fake. That's fake. So when she called up here, she called up to really ask Courtney, like, yo, girl, is this real? Is this a real show? And Courtney like, heck yeah, it's a real show. What you mean? Oh, well, okay. Well, since you said that, Cornelius said, that's how you get yourself caught up. He couldn't even be honest about his, you know, his games at this point. You know, he was like, this is really hard for me. I wasn't expecting to meet you. I didn't know I can meet, you know, everything about you is great. Like, you know, you're amazing. He was like, of course, I would want to start something with you. But, you know, it is a little tricky because I'm assuming, like, in her mind, she feels like they're together and they are going to be together and they're going to get married. And I was like... Because that's what Camille wanted. Camille came on his show to find love. He was like, no. (laughs) He he was like, no, there will be no proposal. He was like... Right, because this is happening. Like, you're going through this and you're watching week by week. Well, I don't know... All right. So, you know who took this picture, right? Who, who took, took those that pictures? pictures? Who took that Corey. picture? I need a shot. Corey, Corey I'm with you, girl. I need a shot, too. Corey was with us. Corey was with them. In New York? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Corey took all these. Corey took all so these pictures. New York. Did Corey think he had a girlfriend? 
<laughs> wait, I, come on, come on. What's up? Wait. Did what? Time out. Did Corey think he had a girlfriend? What? What in the whole reality TV is going on here? Okay. <laughs> what in the whole scam is going on here? <laughs> I thought a man who said he was chasing that girl just as much as she was chasing him had something to say. Child. <laughs> Okay, Corey, Corey, come front. Come to the front, Corey. Come to the front. We got questions. We got questions. Was Corey in on this? I thought a man who was crying at the reunion, he don't know why he do these things. <laughs> said something. I thought he said something. Uh-huh. Is this why? Is this why? Is this why um, Camille was trying to defend Corey? Because she knew that Corey knew more than what he was saying? Huh? Is this why she was trying to defend him? Because she knew that Corey had all the tea as well. And if I piss off Corey, Corey gonna go out there and put it in, put the um, put everything out there too. Child, what you should have been watching for was Dag on Alexa. Huh? This girl, Alexis, Alexa, whatever her name is, that's who you should have been watching. Because you sat up there and tried to defend Corey. And because Cor Corey had all the tea. Because Corey was out there taking the pictures of this girl and Cornelius. Now, what I will say is pictures are pictures, right? You can you can pose in a picture and it don't mean nothing necessarily anything, but um make it make sense. I, I don't know. Corey can ugly cry on cue, then I believe that that psycho fat could do anything. Okay. Okay. We didn't we didn't talk about her. Like it was just it was nothing. She was she was not she was a non-motherfucking factor. Okay, okay, that's more why it wasn't even a factor. Like nobody was thinking about her, no one was concerned about her. Nobody was like You was, you was asking mad questions about her. Because we was playing, we went to Melba's, which is a very famous place in Harlem. Yes, I used to live in New York. Familiar. I I used to live around this corner from Melba's. Yeah, yeah so we team. met Melba, and we were sitting there. I remember I was playing with Corey, and I was like, Corey, how? What do you think about me and your brother being together, like dating? And he was like, Y'all cute. He was like, I like y'all. He was like, Yeah. So Corey knew that they was like going to be dating or together or something. Which is why Corey, that's why Camille was in the uh, reunion like, you know, once I really got to know Corey, I just realized that he don't do everything the same as everybody else, child. I <laughs> he hugging her in some of the pictures. Okay, Mona, I got the screenshots, the bigger ones, y'all. I'm going to post them. <laughs> y'all know I'm going to post them, okay? Um, this is entertaining if it ain't nothing else, okay? If it ain't nothing else, it's definitely entertaining. Um, I do feel like uh, we're going to have to get hear what Camille got to say, but there is one last part of this live that I want to play for y'all, um, and then we're going to go into Camille's, uh, you know, situation. Yeah, yeah, she did. Okay, let's see. I know it's somewhere towards the end. Let me see. And the fact that he I had been didn't telling... Oh, the show real, like... He had been telling focus on this and I was like so wait like after our little situation you know I is that when you figured out that him and Camille must be dating for real well this is this is what I'm about to find out so okay. he was like so I was like well what about you know all the little stuff that we did and, and I, he was just like you know well if if we had had sex maybe this would be a different decision girl bye <laughs> stop stop and I was like my nigga, like, you good. I'm Yo, good. I made a live too. When did he say that? This was, like, after the Blacklist situation and me standing up for you. Now, all of a sudden, it was, like, a whole 360. Like, I didn't you know y'all were talking. Like, I did not even know that. I was. It was not, I mean, like, it, it was, to me, this was just somebody that was trying to come up, come up in the industry. He would happen to get on a show. And... I mean, I know Corey, so to me, it was like, all right, you have a, you had a great opportunity. And he was like, this opportunity, I'm hoping, will open doors for acting, mm. for media. Mm. Um, you know, so if, if y'all would have taken it to another level, y'all would have been together. No. What's the was, implication? I, think, I feel like he was going to compare the sex that he's having with Camille to if we had had sex. 
Wait, wait, wait. So you think they're intimate? What do you mean think? Hold on. Where's my rosary? <laughs> <laughs> Where? Where? What do you mean think? What do you think? Y'all, y'all stressing me out because I'm sitting here like I'm in real life and y'all in TV land and I'm like, bruh, they had sex in like September. Oh, how do you know? Oh, you talk because before I lay down with anybody, I just kind of want to know what's good. So I was like, you have sex with anybody on the show. So Cornelius and Camille had sex in September. Y'all, I don't care if they had sex. You want to have sex, do what you got to do, okay? That's between y'all two. But the point is that he was trying to have sex with her, and they were supposed to be celibate over there on that side. This is why you can't go with these, oh, I'm celibate type of people, okay? Because either you are or you saying you are just to get some. Because a lot of men will do that and try to get some. You got to be in your own walk of faith. Like night, night. Um, uh, Mumin said on Crystal Channel last night in her interview, she said that she, um, if a man has to be in his own journey of celibacy, so that she, um, when they get together, when that time comes where you know they get tempted, they both can turn away and say, "No, this is not it," because of my faith with that, because of my journey that I have with God. Because when you get with someone who's going to wait for you, what happens is when it's time for that temptation to rise up. <clears throat> OK, when the temptations start rising, he don't care. He still won't take it because you won't give it because he's waiting for you. He's not doing this for himself. I honestly feel like neither one of them was waiting for marriage. Neither one of them was waiting for marriage. It just seemed like the right thing to say or the right thing to do. Ciao. And he said what? He was like, yeah, you know, me and Camille, they, they done it. Goodbye. So they did it. They did it. Cornelius is playing games. Cornelius is playing games. It's kind of like how we watched that um the reunion with Jay and everyone, and then everyone would say, Jay told me I was his number one. Jay told me I was his number one. Jay told me I was his number one. Child, I'm so over these people. Like, for what, Cornelius? For what? Like, you did not look good at all through this season to go this far to this extent. <laughs> You, this did not make you look good at all. And yet it's still, you go do some foolishness to make you look worse. We felt bad. We felt like you were like weak. We didn't think you was like this good man. We just thought you were weak as crap. That's it. That's all we thought. We thought she was weak and nothing more. Nothing more. So you would come up here and play these games, child, please. You ain't do nothing for yourself. Absolutely nothing for yourself. So then Camille gets on live with um, <clears throat> um, Denise, okay? And she says that her and uh, that this girl, Alexis, was trying to break them up. She was just a publicist. She already knew what was going on. Blah, 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 blah. But then she released a, released a, a statement, okay? And she said, there are people in this world um, that feed off lies and negativity. There are people in this world that want to see, see you just as unhappy as they are. No matter what you think of how I was on the show, my real life, my interviews, and how I move show everything so something totally different. Did Camille do any interviews? But she only did the ones with Cornelius where he was lying, right? Okay. Okay. Pay very close attention to the lies being told. Pay very close attention to the gossiping and who is spreading the toxic, toxic, mm, y'all know my words, toxicity. <laughs> Pay very close attention to the lives and the interviews that feed you fabricated stories. The cameras are off now and the actions and the, uh, and the actions of the cast members and bloggers speak to who they truly are as a person. Well, let me just tell you something. 
I'm just, you know, I'm I'm just one of those love bloggers that's just going through the motions with everybody else, child. I'm talking about what y'all put out here. I didn't go make up no stuff, okay? I didn't go tell no lies on nobody. This is what y'all say, and I'm just going to give y'all my opinion on the situation, okay? So that's, and um, people are not feeding off of lies and negativity. We don't know what the lies are, child. It seems like you may be some of the lying, okay? So let's get into that. Let's get into that. <laughs> Backstory, a young lady who was trying to be, uh, talking about this girl that we just watched, a young lady who was trying to be PR for Corey and Cornelius DM me pictures of them hanging out. She also implied that they were an item. So remember when I said if she was trying to be his PR, what did that have to do with whether or not he was seeing somebody? Remember I said that in the beginning of the slide, I was like, Wait, what, do they, what do the two have to do with each other? Question mark, okay? Okay, so then she said, uh, they, Corey and Cornelius and her took a trip to um, took a trip to New York to try to do the red carpet for Soul Train Awards since she had gotten them both into events before, okay? So she was supposed to be doing what she was supposed to be doing, getting them into the events because that's what she said, right? Her intent, Sally, was to break us up because she felt I was bad for his brand. Hmm. I also have I also have recorded proof of him addressing her and questioning her as to why she would even think that she, what she did was OK. She went on live yesterday with one of my castmates and a former Raised to Love castmates to tell a story she simply know simple, that she knows simply isn't true. Of course, everyone on the live and view is fed into it. Okay, so how y'all how y'all feeling so far? Do we feel like Camille might be on to something, or are we feeling like you know, girl, bye, girl, bye, or girl, you on to something? Okay, let's go into this one. Um, so then she said, "Here's a text sent on December twentieth, apologizing for her act." The girl sent her text apologizing for her actions, and yet she was on live yesterday selling the same lies. The devil is busy, y'all. Stay prayed up. So this is the text message. The text message says, I apologize for what I did to Camille and apologize to for you and any disruption I may did. Meaning she's apologizing to Cornelius and Camille for anything that she may have messed up. OK, in that moment, I felt I felt it was what I wanted to do, although I don't care for her personality. After getting to know you, it was um, pers um uh it was me wanting to protect you, but it was wrong. If you can extend the apology to her, I am sorry for what I did. It was out of character and out of place. Best of luck to you, and I'm truly happy for you and her. The day say Monday, December 20th at 1146 a.m. What y'all got to say? Because y'all quiet in these comments. Y'all quiet in these comments. What y'all got to say? Does, does this make it seem like what, um, does this text message make what Camille said seem true? Did this girl already apologize for what was going on? Girl, no, it was not tagged. It was just her showing the message. It was just someone had a message, girl. You know, they can make fake uh, text messages and everything, but I'm just going by what I see. I'm just going by what I see, and we just going to talk about what we see because y'all see the same thing I'm seeing. That's all, that's all that was posted. That's all that, that's all that was posted, child. Y'all got some more. Send it to me. I'll show y'all. Convenient that the response was after the New York trip, right? Uh-huh, Cornelius played her. I want to hit a recording. Me too! <laughs> Baby Ruth Love, I want to hit a recording too. What is the context of this conversation? 
That's a good question because that is the only text that we saw. We did not see what he said to her. And how does Camille have the text messages? If anybody should have the text messages, it should be Cornelius. Unless, unless Cornelius forward the text messages to Camille. Can you get an interview with Alexis? Shall we go into the season six? <laughs> I'm sure... Um, I'm sure Little Black Book already got it. And I feel like once Little Black Book get an interview, it's kind of hard to follow up after that because they usually go up there with the intent to spill all the tea. So I'm sure he already got it because he was in the live last night with the comments and I'm sure he DM'd her right after and I'm sure she probably going to be up there later on. Hold on one second. Okay. Seems like another basic tactic to keep these uh to keep them relevant after the show. None of this is making sense. I'm just telling y'all what I see. Okay. I'm just telling y'all what I see. Um, I just feel like honestly, is no point in interviewing this girl. You know what? I'll 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 try. I'll try. I don't like to interview the cast. I don't like to interview the cast because I like to drag people. <laughs> <laughs> and child, they're going to be looking at me like, no, nah, I'm not going over there. She said this to me. She said that about me. I I'm good. <laughs> so I don't, I don't like to do the cast members, but I might try. I might, I might try to get her to see what is what she got to say. Um, uh, they all a bunch of foolishness. Doesn't matter what Camille say at this point, her nasty behavior crushes all the chances of at redemption. I totally agree. I feel like after everything that she has done, especially with that whole brown girl squad and Courtney and blah, 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 all that stuff, it doesn't even matter. You got finesse, okay? You got finesse, and that's what it is. Cornelius came up here, plays you. You, you, you took a liking to him, okay? Thinking he was going to be something different, thinking he had the right intentions, and he didn't. And you sat there, and you fought off the chance for anyone else to even get to know him. So there's nobody's fault but your own, sis. Eh, 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 eh. If you was not being a bulldog guarding him from the whole entire cast of females, then maybe you would have had a chance to see the effery. Okay, the one thing about Ready to Love, the reason why they're dating multiple people is so that everyone can get an idea of who this person is and they can could they can talk about it amongst each other so that we can figure out if this person is truly ready to love. But because you didn't give him a chance to do his process to let the other women see him for who he really was, y'all never had the chance to have those conversations and you got played. So whose fault is it? Child, I just made sense of that whole ready to love situation in my head. I just said it out loud and made perfect sense. This is why they eliminate people. They eliminate people because once everyone go through this, the dates with these people, they start to see them. Just the same thing like Moomin said on the reunion. She said, every last one of these girls told me that you wasn't ready to love and I chose to go by what you said. The reason why they dating all these other people is so that everyone can pick out what's wrong with them. Or if they really here for the right reasons. But you didn't let that happen. You didn't let that happen, sis. So don't be mad. Because they probably would have told you. He not ready to love. Mm-mm. Girl, he not ready. <laughs> no. They would have caught on to him just like they caught on to Corey. Corey, you know, mister, I got to go talk to everybody. I got to build a connection with everybody. That's not how it works. Ciao. This is a whole mess. But did y'all like this video? Did, did y'all like this video? Because y'all, I need y'all to like this video. And I need y'all to subscribe if y'all not subscribing. And if you don't want to comment, it's okay. Just give me a yellow heart. Let me know that you're here. Okay, let me know that you're here. Y'all know I love me some yellow hearts. Show me some love on a Saturday. <laughs> but it's ridiculous. You're right. He was ready to play. And they would not let him get through the process. She would not let him do the process the, pro the way it was supposed to go. And because of that, she got played in the process. And that's all this really came down to. Um, and I don't even know why she was sitting up there throwing out that daggone um, picture of a ring that was supposed to be um, an engagement ring, which was fake. That wasn't him really giving her no ring. OK, he already said that he wasn't proposing to her and all this other stuff. So like I'm saying, it's foolish. 
is foolish. It's people like this that makes it impossible for us to really see real love happen on TV. Everybody's an opportunist nowadays. Like, I don't have a problem with you, you know, really looking for love and just so happen to be building your brand at the same time. That's fine. But when you come up here with the intent to just um, build your brand and then maybe if love happens, it happens. That's the part that bothers me. Because we all as we all need to promote ourselves one way or another, right? So I'm fine with that, but that should be not that should not be your primary reason. Your reason should be you want love. But since I'm going up here and it is going to be on TV, I don't have a problem with you know saying I do this and I do that. But now it's like I do this, I do that, I do this, I that do that. And if I just so happen to find love, then it is what it is. But if not, I got the clout that I wanted. And he did this, like that girl said, was because he wanted to open up the doors to being an actor. He wanted to open up the doors to getting some um, exposure. He wanted to open up the doors to do all this other stuff. Like, no. Yes, playing in our face is ridiculous. If Ohm really let these people not do interviews, and I know it sucks because we love the interviews, right? Because that's how we get all the tea. But if Ohm really stopped them from doing these interviews, imagine how many real connections we might actually get. Now, I'm not saying, oh, let them stop doing the interview, Shaq, because it's content. Y'all know we need some content, <laughs> okay? Or at least let them tweet or something, okay? Because that season when um they did the resort, they was out here tweeting it all up, okay? At least let them tweet or something. We still need something in the background to keep us getting through, okay? But what I'm saying is they just let them go up there and they give out all of, well, you know what? I'm not even going to hold you because everything that they was talking about this season had nothing to do with the show. It was everything from behind scenes. And that's perfectly fine. But at the end of the day, when people are up there for um, exposure, they are willing to go the extra, extra mile. They caught on the frame. They absolutely did. They absolutely did. They said, uh, she said, everyone, every one of these ladies told me that you was not ready to love. They told you. Y'all think they go into deliberations just to say who they like? No, they go into deliberations to have these conversations about people's character to figure out if everyone's seeing the same thing or not. And her and, and when that girl was talking to Simone and Courtney, she said that Cornelius had like um Zadia as well. She likes he likes Zadia. And I feel like, see, if Camille would have let would have did this the right way, she would have been able to see that, you know, he was feeling her cousin. Didn't they call themselves cousins or whatever, child? Your man was trying to date your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to date your cousin. I said, I know they am so happy right now. Like, everybody want my girl. Everybody want my girl up there looking a freaking fool, a hot freaking mess. I don't know, y'all, but that that's what happened. That's what happened. I'm getting ready to wrap this on up. Okay, we're going to wrap it on up. I'm going to see if the episode came down for the reunion so I can actually make a review for y'all, okay, that y'all hopefully y'all go and watch after we done had this whole conversation about all this foolishness, okay? Watch the review, child. It still happened, okay? <laughs> um, and then I'm going to come back later because we got to do our Married at First Sight live. Okay, you guys, our first grown and sexy after dark conversation will be tomorrow at 10 o'clock. This is for adults only, okay? If you are not mature, if you don't like to talk about intimacy, if you don't like to talk about sex and romance and all that good stuff, okay? Then this is not the, you know, that will not that will not be the lie for you. That's perfectly fine. But we got some things that we're going to get into over there um, at 10 o'clock. Eventually, I do want to move it off of um, YouTube platform. So it may not be as explicit as I would like, but it's still gonna it's still gonna push some boundaries. Um, and if they don't monetize it, it is what it is. Um, but I want to promote it here so I can build up the following for that segment, and then we're gonna move it to a different platform where we can really get deep down in it. Okay. But anyway, y'all, um, I'm gonna get up off of here. It's been real. Okay. And then anyone coming back from the uh the replay, leave your comments down below. I appreciate y'all for hanging out with me. Oh, it was like 200 or something in here today, y'all. We Oh, <laughs> but anyway, like this video, comment, share, 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 share. I love you all so much. Shout out to my members. Shout out to my Maj. I love y'all so much. And I'll talk to y'all later. 